Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is? Listen for input action. Let us run through our quick little example. When I hit play, my character can move around. I've got nothing really special going on. He can jump and he can hit the E key. My E key is pressed. If I hit the P key, it's going to pull up my pause menu. My character can still move. That's nothing really of a concern, but I have a pause menu on the screen. Now if I hit the P key again, the pause menu goes away. The difference here being traditionally when you pause the game or you set the input to UI only, the player controller is your primary input for your input flow. It's going to go through your controller and it's going to pass it along to other things. Now other actors can register for input and that's completely different. But in this case, your UMG widget generally will not take input commands. Now by input commands, if we go up to edit, project settings, we go to input, I mean these action mappings here. Your traditional UMG widget doesn't understand action mappings. It understands things such as the E key. Or if we were to pull up the menu and we go into something such as an override, we can go into the key down and then you can check for the key event is equal to, whoops, oh, it's not, let's do it this way because I can't type. You can do something like which key was pressed on the key down and you can check against that. But it's a little bit annoying because it doesn't allow you to use your input mapping. Now to get around that, they have added in the, if I can find where I hit it at, what I do with Arial, they have added in the listen for input action node. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we type in listen for input action, we're going to find this node here. Now something that is key, if we go back into our character and type in listen for input action, well we're not going to find it. If we uncheck context sensitivity, we're still not going to find it. Listen for input action is only going to work inside of a user widget. It's for the UMG. So that's something to keep in mind. Even though the target is a user widget reference, you're still not going to be able to use it outside of a UMG. So now that we have it out, let's go ahead and look at it. Pretty simple. It's got a few inputs. We have our target, which is generally going to be ourself, unless you want to have it listen after it's created something else. Usually it's just going to be self and it's going to be ran inside of the widget we want to listen. The action name will be the name inside of your input project settings. So if I pull this up, we'll see jump, pause button, action button, and interact. Those would be the action names I'd put in here. For example, jump. The event type is what happened. Did we press it? Did we release it? Is the button repeating, double clicking, or is it an axis movement? I personally have not been able to get axis movement to work. This is set up as an action mapping, not an axis mapping. For whatever reason, maybe it needs some more work, maybe it's bugged, maybe it's just not implemented yet. Maybe someone else has figured this out. Please feel free to comment below and I'll follow up. But I can only really get the pressing and releasing to work because that is the way actions work, pressing and releasing. Underneath this we have consume. This is a boolean I'll cover shortly. But basically, if this happens, don't allow anything else to handle this button. That's what it means, and I'll show you the example. Callback is the important part. This is basically the delegate, the event or the function that we are going to call whenever this happens. In terms of flow, let's see how this works. When this widget is constructed, I'm running my listen for input action. I'm listening for the pause button when it's pressed. I'm telling it to consume input, and then I'm hooking up callback to my pause button pressed event. What is happening here is when the pause button is pressed, I'm printing the string widget paused pressed, and then I'm removing this widget from the parent. How it works in terms of flow is my character is walking around, he's handling all input like normal. The pause button is pressed. When the pause button is pressed, the character itself says, hey, the player pause button was pressed, creates my widget, and adds it to the viewport. So at this point in time, my character has handled creating the pause menu. 
Now, traditionally, if we were not listening for input action, my character now has to handle the action of closing the pause menu or the pause menu has to have a button you can click on because the UMG widget traditionally cannot take the actual keyboard input. The character takes the keyboard input. Now that we're using this, the next time it's ran, because we're listening for the pause button, this is going to happen. Now here's where our consume comes into play. Let me go ahead and uncheck consume and let's run our example this time. Notice in the top left my debug messages. When I hit P, the player button is paused. The menu is created and now our menu is here listening for input action. We'll go ahead and hit pause again and you'll notice we see two things popped up. Player paused and the widget paused. We'll hit it again. You'll notice it pops up again and it's going to continue popping up twice. Well, what's the reason for that? We have our character as our input. When I create my widget and tell it to listen, we now have our widget as input. So we have our player controller and our widget on our little stack, our list of things to listen for input for. When I push the button again, my widget is firing off and my player is firing off. So we're getting into a loop where it's stuck. When I tell it to consume the widget because it's a higher priority, it was created later, is going to consume the input and then the player is going to have no knowledge that the pause button was pressed. And then of course it can fire off its stuff on its own. We hit play again, pause, unpause, pause, and unpause. So we're good to go there. We got no issues. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind and let me go ahead and show you how this would be hooked up. We'll listen for input. Let's say I was going to do this for the pause button like we did. And let's say we wanted to do something. When you drag off your callback, you can go ahead and add a custom event or create an event. Traditionally, you do something like adding a custom event. My custom event, you name this whatever you want. That's custom name, not event. And then you would go ahead and do whatever actions you want. That's how the delegate's going to work. Basically, this fires. Somewhere in the background, it says, okay, we're going to do something at some point in time. And when we do it, we're going to go ahead and call whatever's hooked up to our callback. So for people who don't understand delegates, here's a little refresher. That's basically how it works. Now in terms of the accesses, inside of my character, project settings, input, I have my axis mapping. And you'll notice one of them is called move forward. And that is what happens when I push the W key and my character moves forward. I have this listening for an input action called move forward. Now I have it to pressed. And I have a callback here. Let's go ahead and just do a print string. And we'll call this one move forward. We'll go ahead and run this. I'm moving forward right now. I'm hitting P. And now I'm hitting move forward, but you notice nothing's happening on the screen. If we change this to axis, and we go ahead and hit play again. And pull up our menu and move forward. Well, you notice it still doesn't come up. This is what I meant earlier. The axis mappings should not, as far as I can tell, work with this because this is called action, input action. And the action mappings are the pressed and released up here. So as far as I know, it's not going to work with your axis mappings. However, if I was to change this, remove the string, change this to jump, have this a callback called consume input. This is just what I named it because that's what I'm going to do with it and have nothing set up. It's kind of cool. If we hit play, we go ahead and hit P to pause. I'm hitting the jump key and nothing's happening. Every time I hit the jump key, if we were to go here and debug and go ahead and jump, it would be trying to fire off our consume input node right here because there's nothing here. Basically we're saying, Hey, jump, do nothing. So I've disabled our jump button. You could do the same thing with your movement. You'd probably traditionally use something like disabling your movement itself. So that way you can keep your movement disabled while you work with your user interface. In terms of one of the restrictions here, inside of my character, when I am creating my initial user interface here, I'm setting the input mode to game and UI only. 
if you set your UI, your input mode to UI only, where the game is uh, bypassed, these nodes are not going to fire. These nodes are still relying on our traditional player controller stack where the input is passed through by the player controller. As of right, not writing, as of recording, all of the input will file through the controller through the game mode itself. So in order for this node to work, you do have to have the game mode enabled. You cannot use just UI. So you can go and use game input mode game and UI, and it's going to pass through properly. There has been um, indication that they wish to change this in the future, so that way it will work properly with the UI mode only. And if they do, you can go ahead and ignore that. And, and when they do, I'll go ahead and drop in a note, maybe somewhere on the screen at this point, and indicate it now works properly with UI only. But that is one restriction for now. Make sure you have input to game and UI. Feel free to listen to any of your input actions. Set up a callback delegate in order for it to fire off when this is done. Make sure you consume input if you wish your UI to handle everything and you're good to go. An example of this may be you have one universal input. Let's say uh, Paragon is a good example and um, Division is a good example. When you pull up the menu, you have your Q and your E key, which are the two keys next to your W. And traditionally, those are used for paging or changing tabs inside of a game. In Division, for example, you may have your character, your inventory, your stats, and things like that. And during gameplay, your Q and your E key may be mapped to rolling or dodging. However, when your menu is pulled up, it wants the menu to consume those buttons, and you use that to change the tabs on your user interface so you have full keyboard control. Same thing with Paragon. When you're on the main menu, you use it to change tabs. So that's how you could set up one input to have two different things. You have your UMG, listen for the input and handle it appropriately. And then you have your character itself, listen for the input and handle it appropriately. Just make sure you consume. That's going to wrap up our listen for input action note.